These are the 10 best ways to get free leads this year as a realtor. I understand from back when I was a new agent myself, when I had absolutely no money, that it could be difficult to be paying for lead generation, paying for coaching, and paying for all these things when you don't even have any money. So what I'm going to do is break down 10 different ways that I've personally generated free leads as an agent or ones that have helped the agents in my organization at eXp generate leads as well. Now, if I don't have these ranked in order, so there's going to be a number of ninja ones that I'm going to break down throughout, sprinkled throughout this video. So you want to make sure that you stay to the end. Don't skip a single part because all of these have been proven to generate free leads. What's up guys? It's Mike Sharp with eXp Realty. I train thousands of agents every year to skyrocket the business. And if you want to know more about these lead strategies, but also how to convert at scale, drop a comment below because I just released my brand new free training that agents are raving about for free, showing you how to rank number one with your content, how to use free organic videos to attract clients on autopilot and become a client magnet. And people are going crazy over this because of how much value is packed into this free training session. So if you want that, drop a comment below. Otherwise, let's dive into it. Number one is strategic partners. This was a big one, but one that many agents mess up, which is in the beginning as a brand new agent, when I had no money, I went to networking events, which we'll get to, but I formed a lot of strategic partnerships with different people across a vast array of different industries like lenders, legal, financial planners, even back when I had my BMWs before Lamborghinis was setting up partnerships with people at the BMW dealership. And what this really allowed me to do is number one, start to tap into other people's audiences. But the one key thing that you have to be mindful here is make sure that they are actually strategic partners, not one way streets, but two way streets. So making sure that you're not only sending them business, but the more difficult part is, which I was able to do, and you're going to have to put a bit of work into is making sure that you are their exclusive partner. You are their exclusive agent, because what you'll see all the time is you'll meet with these lenders or, you know, financial planners and they'll tell you, hey, Mike, I'm going to send you a bunch of business. I love to work doing work together. And then you're going to sit down with them and you know they'll say, oh, Mike, so nice to catch up. Two months ago, I actually just worked with somebody that was considering buying a house or they were considering selling their house. Well, why didn't you reach out to me? And so the way that I started creating these partnerships is we did it in a very open discussion, but said, hey, anytime somebody even mentions the word buying, selling, moving, investing, anything, make sure you send me a text right then and there. And what happened is by creating these strategic partnerships where we were both mutually involved, anytime I was with a client that needed any of their services, I would in the middle of the meeting, do a quick call to my strategic partners and say, Hey, John, just got this client here. They're actually sitting right beside me, but I know that I need to connect them with you because they're looking for a financial planner. I just wanted to give you a heads up and I'll connect with you after the meeting. Done. And they would reciprocate that from me. So when you're looking at strategic partnerships, you really want to make sure that they are going to think about you every single time they're working with the client. Number two was networking events. Two different ways, both attending and hosting. Now attending networking events worked wonders to expand my network. And that's where I found a lot of my strategic partners was going to networking events. And these were usually along the lines of going to real estate networking events or going to local business, local entrepreneur, local founder events in my local market. Now, if you want to know how to find those, go to either meetup.com or go to eventbrite.com, type in your local market or type in business in your local market, entrepreneurship, real estate, investing, whatever, and you'll find a ton of them. But the next level of that, which is where the majority of my clients came from, was when I started hosting them for free. So what I did is I met some of the people that owned these co-working spaces and said, hey, after hours when it's not busy, can I use any of these boardrooms to bring people in, get them familiar with your incredible space, which might get you clients, and then it's going to allow me to host these events for free. So what I did every single month is I started hosting local real estate investor networking events where I would bring people in and meet from the realtor side. I would talk about the best places to invest in my city and then I would bring a strategic partner along with me, whether it be a lender, a contractor, an electrician, or somebody that could add additional value to it based on their skill set for flipping properties, things like that. And in the beginning, I had like seven people that showed up after the first three, four months 
months of doing this, I started having 40 to 50 people showing up to every single event. And the best part about investors is they were repeat clients. So I started doing multiple deals every single year from those free networking events. Number three, Facebook Marketplace. Very underutilized, but there's a couple things you want to make sure you're doing when you leverage Facebook Marketplace. The way that people go wrong with this is they post all of the details that are available on the MLS when they make their posting in Marketplace. Well, if you do that, there's no reason to reach out to you. So what I started doing is I gave enough information to pique curiosity, but I left out the most important information and the most important photos in order to make sure that they had to reach out to me to actually get access to that property or the information they were looking for. So a couple things that I did. Now, the one thing I'm gonna ask you about is drop a comment if you know the three photos I made sure to never include. Because if you include these three photos, it's almost guaranteed they're never gonna reach out to you because they're gonna have enough information to make a decision of whether or not they like that property. So drop a comment if you have an idea of what the three photos that I would always leave out are, and I'll make sure to reply with the correct answer so that you don't include these. But making sure you include and not include very specific photos to pique curiosity. Now the next thing is making sure that you don't include the address. You can include the price because again, you have to in order to put it up to Facebook Marketplace, but do not link it. Do not give any information as to the maybe exact address because usually what you could do, again, this differs from market to market, but what I used to be able to do is just put the community that it was in. I didn't have to put the exact address so they couldn't search it on realtor.com, Zillow, Truly, or Redfin, any of these sites, or the MLS, they had to come to me. Number four is going to be TikTok. TikTok is an incredible opportunity for leveraging the mass organic engagement and reach that it gives you. Now, if you look at the agents in my organization that are doing multiple deals every single month, including million dollar listings from TikTok, a lot of them are doing it from one of three videos. Number one is property tours. This is a great way to create content. For example, this is what $350,000 gets you in Dallas. This is what a million dollars gets you in Santa Monica or anything like that. But the price point property tours perform very well and it also gets a lot of people to come to you and to reach out about potentially considering buying or selling in your market but the ones that do the best are one of two options number one is going to be community comparisons or community information market information talking about it with green screen so using the app the native app and the green screen effect within something like TikTok, a lot of agents are saying something like hey here's denver versus colorado springs in colorado which one's better and doing green screen showing one city behind it and then when they talk about the next city showing the other city behind it so the green screen effect almost gives additional exposure but it also distracts the viewers so the engagement's higher but also what it's going to do is drive a ton of traffic to you and it also creates mass engagement because people are going to have polarizing opinions on which one they prefer which is going to be great for getting additional views but the community comparisons market comparisons do wonders now the one that works in incredibly well that not many people think about is creating publicly shareable content. Almost every agent that I see is creating content catered towards buyers and sellers, but that makes up like 1% of the population. There's the 99% that eventually will be buyers and sellers, but they aren't right now. So they're not even going to consume your content because it's not even in their frame of thinking. So what you want to do is create content for people that eventually will become, which is the general public. So how do you create content for that? It's publicly shareable content, content that the average person in your market will just gladly share with their friends, with their family, with anybody, because it's not related to real estate. So what is this gonna be? This is going to be like the top five restaurants in your market, the top five cocktail bars, five things to do this week, the most expensive listing in your market, the cheapest listing in your market, anything that's going on, which is going to, again, be shareable by the average person. And this works wonders for driving more traffic to your profile. Number five, incredibly important, Google reviews. You need to make sure that you are getting a Google review from every single client that you work with. Also your strategic partners, they can write a review about you and for you as well. Now there's a couple things that are really important here. Number one, think from consumer behavior. If you wanted to go to a restaurant tonight and you wanted to go to an Italian restaurant, well, 
How would you go about picking which one if you didn't know your city? You would type in best Italian restaurants in Michigan. And what you would do is you would look at the ones with the most five or 4.9 star reviews, and then you would probably go to one of the top three. Well, the same thing works with agents, but so many people don't make Google reviews a priority when working with clients. So make it a priority. Make sure that every single time you're working with a client, you get them to write a Google review for you. Now, the one thing that you need to make sure you do is when they write that review, you go back and reply to the review. Now, there's a couple really ninja things you can do with Google reviews, but I'll save that for another Google video that I have coming up talking to you about how you can actually use it to rank your reviews, number one, if you just include a couple strategic things. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video because it will make a world of a difference for your business. Business, but Google reviews is an incredible way to get a ton of free leads. Number six, community and passion involvement. So this is what I did with the car industry. Me being very interested in cars, one of the things that I did is back when I got started as a new agent, when I had my very typical leased BMW that I probably shouldn't have had, is I tapped into the BMW community. I went to the BMW meetups, I became friends with a lot of them, and five out of my first deals in my very first year came from within the BMW community. But I was also interested in exotic cars. So what I started doing is I started going to the exotic car meetups because it's a passion and you can talk to them about something that you mutually are passionate about, not business. And inevitably what comes up in conversation, what do you do? But it doesn't start that way. It never starts off as a one way transactional conversation. It ends up being just a conversation about cars, something you both love. Why did you get this car? What's your favorite car? Whatever's going on. And because you can just talk shop and it be very natural and authentic, eventually when that comes up, you've already broken the ice and now it's a more warm, engaging conversation. So making sure that you're tapping into communities that are related to your passion is a really great way to tap into new markets, expand your network. And that's where I got a lot of my free luxury leads. Number seven is going to be local involvement, getting involved with your local community. This could be things like getting involved with coaching certain sports, being involved with the school, volunteering in your market, hosting barbecues for your community or doing anything that is related to to your local market center. This is a great way, again, to be able to create amazing content. It's a great way to expand your network and it shows that you're giving back. It shows that you're invested selflessly into the community and it's a really great farming strategy but ultimately what it does is it just gives you a bunch of free conversations. And if you start leveraging strategic partnerships like lenders, title, things like that, oftentimes they'll pay for it as well. So it ends up becoming free for you. Number eight is gonna be open houses. Now, if you want to know the best open house strategy, drop a comment below and I'll send you a video that we recently did talking about open houses and the ninja strategies that you could do in order to almost guarantee you get clients from your open houses. I've genuinely never seen anybody share this before, but it works wonders proven across hundreds of agents. So if you want that, drop a comment below, but open houses are a great way to do it with the caveat being that you actually approach it with intent. A lot of agents unfortunately approach open houses in a very passive way and they just show up, hope people walk through, let them know, hey, if you have any questions, let me know. And that's it. And three, four hours goes by, two hours go by, and suddenly you've had a couple of loose conversations, but you don't have any leads. So you just wasted three to four hours. But what I want to make sure that you're doing is that if you are using open houses, not only are you using it to create a ton of incredible content, but you're also using it to make sure it's strategically you're getting more clients for free. Number nine is going to be blogs. Blogs work incredibly well, very under tapped in certain markets. And again, not many people are touching on it because of the fact that it does take a bit of time to write a properly SEO focused article, but a lot of people have already done the legwork for you. So the good part about introducing blogs is that it's very SEO friendly. It's search heavy, but also it's something that's evergreen in nature, because if you properly optimize a blog, it's not going anywhere. If you're writing about different communities in your market, those communities aren't just going to get up, walk away. They're staying there forever. So by creating content, content focused on leverage, high leverage types of content that again are going to be relevant for years to come. It's a really great way to take 30, 45, 60 minutes to write a blog article that if you properly write it and use keywords can bring you a ton of clients for free, which leads to the last one. Number 10, my favorite YouTube. YouTube is undoubtedly without question, the number one way right now to get free leads. And if you want to know how to rank your videos, number one, again, drop a comment, just say free training and I'll make sure to give you my brand new free training breaking down the exact sequence 
of how to rank your videos number one, but this is how agents in my organization are doing upwards of 87 deals in their first year, entirely free with nothing but an iPhone and no ads and no prospecting. YouTube creates massive leverage of your business. It is a really great way to create evergreen strategies. So again, if you're doing community tours, if you're talking about price points, if you're doing property tours, those are always relevant. Not just now, not just next month, not just next year, but for years to come. So what it does is again, because it's so searchable and it's owned by Google, your YouTube videos can be ranking on Google for free. And that's how you can start to generate a ton of leads. So if you have any other questions, drop a comment below. Otherwise, I'd love to know what your favorite lead strategy is. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, can't wait to see you in that free new training and we'll see you on the next video.